Something big coming up on your screen Just settle back and relax Cause you're gonna get A whole lot of singing A whole lot of laughing A whole lot of loving from me good tonight. I just had a nice nip. Nap! <laughs> Nap! Put an A where you got your eye. <laughs> or something. Of course, I'd feel better if Jeannie wasn't mad at me. She's upset because I wouldn't let her drive me down to the studio. But I get too nervous when she drives. Last week, she drove straight up a telephone pole. <laughs> I didn't, have, didn't mind that so much, but she almost hit another woman who was driving down. <laughs> I'll tell you, my Jeannie's real, really an amazing girl. She can thread a needle, but she can't get a compact car in a garage that's 15 feet wide. But you know why it's funny? To this day, Jeannie will knock on my door and say, Honey, are you decent? And if I say no, she won't come in. So yesterday I was in the shower and there's a knock on my door. And Jeannie says, honey, are you decent? I figured this foolishness has gone on long enough. So I said, sure. And she sent the new maid in to meet me. <laughs> the Dean Martin Variety Show, after the second year that it was on the air and for the next eight years, was among the top ten shows on the network because what you were watching was a guy who was cute, delightful, charming, funny, and wonderful to sit back and just say, hey, he looks like a really nice guy. He looks like he's having a good time. give myself a shot here that hate me. Well, I got, oh, I got a great show for you, and I hope this is it. <laughs> Hello again, Howard 
Cosell lovers and how right you are. <laughs> Welcome to the Friday Night Domestic Fights. Coming to you direct from Suburbia Gardens, the arena for tonight's domestic Donnie Brook, the dining room of Grayson Harvey Melman, who've been slugging it out for the past 17 years. As tonight's marital melee progresses, I'll be bringing you my own infallible opinion right out of the horse's aperture. <laughs> I see one of the adversaries in the altercation approaching. Tell me, Mrs. Melman, as you arranged that table, are you sufficiently psyched up for tonight's grudge match against your husband? You can bet your bippy, Buster. Do you realize that this is the fourth Friday in a row that that clown has come home late for dinner? The plain truth is your marriage has been leading up to this confrontation for years. One even wonders why it took so long to bring about. Well, I was trying to think of a way to divorce him without making him happy. <laughs> I think you're full of mice. Thanks, Howie. I think you're full of it, too. <laughs> well... Here comes the challenger. Harvey, your wife has intimated that tonight is the night you're going to get yours. Are yeah, you kidding? I already got mine on the way home. I see your opponent, Mrs. Melman, has intimated that you're over the hill. Yeah, but she doesn't know who I've been over the hill with. of the State Matrimonial Commission. Today's lucky winner will go to Las Vegas for an uncontested, all-expense-paid divorce. The loser gets custody of the children. Let's have a good, clean fight. May the keener contender carry off the cornucopia of victory. Well, I certainly hope you're satisfied. Because of you, the pot roast is burned. How can you tell? Even the garbage disposal couldn't keep your cooking down. Are you kidding? You're too cheap to buy a garbage disposal. We got one living in the back room. Your brother. Well, they're feeling each other out. Grace opens with a sweeping generality. Harvey counters with an underhanded comment. You lied to me before I married you. You told me that you were well off. I was, but I didn't know it. A nifty exchange. This is shaping up to be the greatest fight since Liz and Dick. Boy, if you could only read my mind. No, thanks. I don't do flat work. A bolo to the cummerbund. And another thing. Why don't you ever take me golfing with you? I can only drag around one old bag at a time. Well, for your information, I still have the body of a young girl. Well, give it back, because you're getting it all wrinkled. <laughs> End of round one. Mrs. Melman has taken charge with a fusillade of affronts and half aspersions. The only interrogatory which remains pertinent is... How much longer can the bum take it? Every time you take a shower, how come that you insist upon using my best linen guest towels? Because I'm tired of drying myself off with your nylon pantyhose. Ah, <laughs> uh, you wear lifts in your bedroom slippers. You wear lifts in your bras. <laughs> such a terrible person, then why did you send me all those flowers on our honeymoon? Because I thought you were dead. Okay, that does it. Now step outside and say that. Uh-oh. This fight looks like it might lead to violence. The question, will he rise to the bait? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's over. This fight is over. Harvey Melman has just ripped the seat of his trunks. He can't continue. The winner on a split decision, Mrs. Melman. The Star.
who awakes with the dawn and his voice is mysteriously gone, but he sighs as he turns to go on. That's entertainment. <laughs> I don't know what the, what's the matter. I can't sing. I can't talk. Don't worry. I've got just the thing for you. Here, play this. Oh, have you, sir? Yes, just go ahead. A little in the mouth. A little in the mouth. There, now try. Everybody loves somebody. Hey, it's good. Thank you. Thank you, not at Thank all. Thank you, Pat. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know what's wrong. I can't sing. I can't talk. Oh, you too? Here, this will fix you up. Just a little into the mouth. Right, right. Now, right. Everybody loves somebody is lousy and the costumes are terrible and the lighting all right gloria i've had it i don't care if you are the star you are fired you're fired fired don't be ridiculous this is opening night and you'll never find anyone to replace me in time won't i <laughs> won't i oh you fresh you're what i want do you know Gloria's lines? Good, because you're going to be a star tonight. Tonight you're going to be the star. You're going to be great. Is that now? What do you think of that? You're going to be the star. What do I think? Yes. I think the sets are rotten, the music is lousy, the costumes are terrible. Shut and your mouth. Now, this here is a typical Western movie set. You yourselves have probably seen this very set in many movies. But what you may not realize, though, is that these aren't real houses. Oh, no. These are just a, be a bunch of painted flats, and there's nothing behind them. Here, I'll show you. You see? Nothing there. Now, of course, this saves the studio an immense amount of money. Now, if you'll just follow me to the next studio here, we'll get more. <laughs> I know there's a lot of variety shows on television, but all you do is bird imitations. They're looking for acts that are a little different. I know, but I do great bird imitations. Oh, why don't you stop? You do great bird imitations. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Just keep in touch. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> the greatest dog psychiatrist in the world. That's right. If you don't believe me, ask your master. <laughs> what is it, nurse? Nurse. Your, pa your next patient is here. Send him in. It's just Martin. Yeah. 
I'm not gonna be a mind, I'm a busy man. Why don't you sit down? Hold it! Hey! Oh! Uh, hey! On the paper! On the paper! You cannot be too careful! I didn't hear you. I said you cannot be too careful! Doc, I'm kinda worried about my dog. You have no need to worry. I am an expert on dogs. I am a dog doctor. I'm a medical bow wow. Oh. There is nothing about dogs that I don't know. Mm. By the way, your cat's pregnant. <laughs> it comes as a shock to you, Doc. This is a dog. I'll be the judge of that. Hey, kitty. Sit up, kitty. That's a big pussy cat. <laughs> Problem. Well, he hasn't been eating lately. Do you mind if I have a quick look? One, two, three. <laughs> that was very quick. Just as I suspected, it could be very serious. Do you mind if I speak confidentially? Sure, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What? Okay, I'm your doctor. Trust me. Okay. Now I would like to speak to you, Miss Willis. Miss Willis! Would you get this kitty cat out of here? Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Mr. Martin, there is nothing physically wrong with your dog. The problem is all in the mind. But as a psychiatrist, I can help you. Let's start with the basics. What sex is your dog? What? what? Look at my lips. What sex is your dog? I don't know. I never saw it with its fur off. <laughs> Now, people, Mr. Martin, please, that is mine. People don't realize that dogs imitate their masters. No kidding. No kidding. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I said that first. I said that first. Oh, knock it off. Good idea. Now, I miss my thing. In order for me to diagnose your dog properly, I must see what kind of a master you are. In order for us to finish the script, you gotta put some of them things back here. Pretend, please, that I am a dog. Oh, as long as you don't pretend I'm a lamppost. <laughs> Remember, love, affection, and tenderness works wonders, and your dog will be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Excuse me, I have another appointment. Row, row, row! Stepped out of a dream You are too wonderful To be what you see
was a bad cook, but I almost choked on a bone in the chocolate pudding. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you how bad a cook his wife is. His cat only got three lives left. <laughs> hey, you mumble that cost me money. Don't mumble. Just play the piano. Piano? Play the same ease. By the telephone Waiting for An obscene call <laughs> I like that Yes, really daddy Give him a shot Wouldn't you like to fly In my beautiful balloon Just fly around till we find a new saloon. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I'm gonna go to the couch if you don't mind. But remember the great words and the famous words of Sophia Loren's husband, who once said, "Let's face it, it's bigger than both of us." <laughs> Dean, the voice in my orchestra won't let me play the accordion anymore. 
So I thought I'd bring it over here. You know, we could put a, a bunch of grapes in here and I could squeeze them out for you. <laughs> yeah. Surprises around here, I'll tell you. What's the song? Just give me a hint. Oh. You know, with those scores you give me, I could sing anything, but I'll pick out a good one. Supposing I should fall in love with you. Do you think that you could love me too? Supposing I should hold you and caress you, would it impress you or distress you? should say for you I am would you think I'm speaking out of turn supposing I declare it Would you take my love and share it? I'm not supposing I'm in
50. I like to keep up with all the modern slang. Incidentally, girls, there's a cast party after the show, and all of you 50 are invited. Oh. Thank you, Dean. Where's the party going to be? In my Volkswagen. Here's a young man who was a smash on my summer show this year, which is only appropriate because I was always smashed on the winter show. <laughs> you look like I wrote all that up. He's, a, he's about the wildest, funniest man I've ever seen. Tonight, he's going to show you what happens when Mama's little boy starts to feel the first wings of manhood. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Marty Feldman. Come on. Come on, darling. Eat up your prunes. Oh, make them big and strong. Don't you want to be big and strong? Look. I'm nearly 53. I'm almost an old man now. But you'll always be my baby. Now come along. Look. Teddy's eating his prunes. Teddy's eating his prunes. Who, who are you kidding? Eh? Who are you kidding? I, I know Teddy's not eating his prunes. I caught on to that weeks ago. <laughs> All my life, you've kept me locked up in here. You've kept me tied to your apron strings. I mean, can't you face the fact that I'm, I'm grown up now? I mean, I'm going to be senile before I've even been adolescent. <laughs> I mean, I've never been outside that door. I don't even know what the outside world looks like. But you wouldn't like it. It's nasty out there. I let your father go out there once in 1923. And look what happened. He never came back. <laughs> That's not going to happen to you, my baby boy. You're all I got. Aren't you happy with Mummy and all your little friends? With Teddy and Golly and Herbert the Duck? Don't you like them anymore? Yeah, well, yeah, well they're, they're, uh, they're, 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 they're all right in their way. It's just that... Well, I, I, I don't know how to say this, Mum, but there, there, there comes a time in, in, in a boy's life when he starts, he starts to uh, experience certain... Uh... <laughs> certain feelings. What feelings? I don't know, but whatever they are, I hope that duck doesn't satisfy them. <laughs> I, 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 I've had it. I've taken it all these years, and, I, and I've had enough. I'm leaving you. I'm going. No, no, you can't leave me. Oh. I won't let you. You can't stop me. All these years, you, you've dominated me. You've held me back. You've never let me develop. I mean... Who knows what I could have achieved? I could have been something. I could have... I could have grown a puff puff. <laughs> I could have been big and fat and important, like, like, like Mr. Bun, the baker, in Happy Families. No, it's too late. It's too late to change. It's not too late. I made up my mind. That's it. But you haven't any money. You'll need money out there. I've got money. I've got money. <laughs> I've got money. Lots and lots of it. All these years I've been saving it. I've got a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> to go where, wherever my fancy takes me. I'm going to walk out of this door and I'm never coming back. I'm a man now. 
Amen. Mum, um, could, could you see me across the street, please? <laughs> show because the listeners are having troubles dancing to my jokes. <laughs> okay, let's start this little gig with a record from Stevie and Edie. You're watching the sun come up, counting your money, money or else in a dim cafe you're ordering Be the start of something. This can be the heart of something. This can be the start of something. from Sound of Music.
When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. The first three notes just happen to be Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Let's see if I can make it easier. Mm. A deer, a female deer, a drop of golden sun, me, a name I call myself, a long, long way to run, so, a needle pulling thread. can now create life in a test tube. Hmm, I hope their wives don't find out about it. <laughs> Do you realize what that means? It means that someday women may not have babies anymore. I bet business will pick up uh, at the drive-ins. Uh. <laughs> no, but just think about that. I mean, someday we might not have babies the way we do now. I mean, science will do it for us. All you have to do is to decide the kind of baby you want, and science will, science will make it. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, it'll be just as easy to order a baby as it will be to order lunch. I may I help you, monsieur? Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Bromley. We have a reservation for a baby at 2 o'clock. Oh, the Bromleys, oh, yes, of course, sir. Right over here, table 5, please, thank madame. You. Monsieur, thank you very much. I'll be right back for your order. Would you be comfortable? Such a nice atmosphere. Uh, the Murphys recommended it. They came. They, they they come here for a baby once a week. Yeah, well, they're Catholic. <laughs> Is uh, Monsieur ready to order, please? I think so. What would you recommend? Well, may I show you? Oh. The triplets are very very good today. <laughs> No, I had them once before. They kept me up all night. Oh, this looks really nice. Blonde hair, blue eyes, and freckles. Um, could we have that with brown hair? I'm sorry, madam. No substitution. <laughs> well, maybe we should order a la carte. Oh, certainly. Now, what, uh... What sex would you like your baby to be, please? Well, my husband's a man and I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'd rather wait until it's old enough to decide for itself. <laughs> Pull the sex. <laughs> now, tell me, please. Have you decided, uh, the Bromleys, have you decided on the color of eyes, please? Uh, like Paul Newman. Oh. And hair? Uh, like Rock Hudson. Uh-huh. Chin? Um, Kirk Douglas. Oh, Kirk Douglas. Body? Like Raquel Welch. <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. Bromley. Like Raquel Welch. Sure, I want to have fun with him, too. <laughs> What kind of baby are they having at the next table? 
Oh, they're having a Chinese baby. Very interesting, don't you think? Yeah, except one hour later you're expecting again. <laughs> oh, what is this? It says here, uh, celebrity combination. Oh, the celebrity combination, yes. That is uh, the body like Frank Sinatra and the brain like Liberace. <laughs> you see, when it grows up, it can have any girl it doesn't want. <laughs> I don't know. Everything looks so good. <laughs> Would you order for us? Leave it to me, monsieur. Your baby will be ready in a moment. And while I'm gone, may I recommend just a... Uh -huh, a touch of the bubbly. The bubbly. The bubbly. <laughs> I'll be right back. Mm, it oh. was a good year for cows. <laughs> This is really lovely, darling. We should have our babies out more often. Right. It's always nice when somebody does it for you, and it's not all that expensive. <laughs> so you, you, you can get a, a complete baby for $50 if you look at that menu. Including labor. Labor. Oh. <laughs> Voila! It's beautiful. Uh -huh. My compliments to the store. Hey, w waiter, there's, there's a fly on my baby. There's a what, sir? A fly on my baby. Well, of course, it's a boy! Oh. Well, baby, I'm going to take him some. It's a quarter to three. And no one in a place except you and me. And him. So set him up, Joe. <laughs> One line you got and you lost up. I got a little story <laughs> that you ought to know. Okay, pal. Listen, get it off your chest. Every okay. night he comes in here with his problems. All right, what's the matter now? She's done it again. She's done I can't stand it. I tell you, I you, can't stand it. You're playing right into her hands. Yeah. Huh? Well, I can't help it. I'm jealous. So she makes me jealous. Listen, they all do that. That is part of their game. As mm -hmm. soon as she thinks you're not jealous, she'll be eating out of your hand. That's right. And, and, and all you got to do is make her think that you trust her. Well, that's easier said than done. Can I do it? Can I do of it? Of course you can do it. But believe me. Hey, but let's take an example just for fun. All right? I'll tell you something. See how you react to it. Picture this. You're waiting three hours for her to come home from a date. There you are. You're waiting three hours for her to come back from a date. Here she comes. Her lipstick is smeared. She can't seem to walk very Here straight. Here she comes. Her lipstick is smeared. And she can't seem to walk very straight. Then she drops a bottle of rye without batting an eye. She says, a train wreck made me late. Well, fella, what do you do? I would trust you. I'm proud of you. I would trust oh, you. <laughs> By George, I swear I would trust you. I think he's got it. No, I'll never be jealous. You'll never, never, never be jealous. Listen, I'm really proud of you. Don't blow your cool and you didn't. Let's take another example. All right? Yeah. Look at my lips. Picture this. You have nothing to do, so you drop in the chat for a while. There you are. You have nothing to do, so you drop into chat for a while. Something's up. The window is open. Your girlfriend is forcing a smile. Something's up. The window is open. Your girlfriend is forcing a smile. And you see a hat, a cane, and a pair of gloves in a nice, neat little pile. What are you going to do? Why, that not working. I would trust him. I would trust him. My George, I swear, I would trust him. No, I'll never be jealous. 
You will never, 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 never be jealous again. Bushes to creep through. That's my plan. And now, now that you're a new man, man, picture this. You go to your sweetie's apartment to borrow the key. Picture this. You go to your sweetie's apartment, you borrow the key. There she is. <laughs> giving a sailor a very affectionate squeeze. There she is. She's giving a sailor a very affectionate squeeze. And to boot. She tells you she was in the arms of her cousin who's back from overseas. Her cousin, her cousin, back from overseas. <laughs> but don't you expect him to believe that? Why, I ought to. I would trust her. I would trust her. By George, I swear, I would trust her. No, I'll never be jealous. You'll never, 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 going to the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, I was working as an assistant stagehand. That's like a gopher. And Orson was producing, writing, directing a show getting ready for Broadway called Around the World in 80 Days. Now, they made a movie about that, and of course, it was very successful, but this was a stage play at the time. And uh, I met Orson at that time, and I've been involved with Orson ever since. He was kind of like, kind of like a father to me. And uh, I have a long-time relationship with Orson, and uh, he did the show. Orson, you know, you really have style. I mean, what other guy traveled with his own maid and houseboy? The thing I can't figure out is why he needs the houseboy. To clean up after me and the maid. Well, everybody ought to have a maid. Everybody ought to have a working girl. Everybody ought to have a lurking girl. To have a maid, everybody ought to have a menial, consistently congenial, and quieter than a mouse. A mouse of profundo, friend. Oh, oh, wouldn't she be delicious? Biting up the dishes, neat as a pin. Oh. Oh, wouldn't she be delightful sweeping out? Sleeping in? Everybody ought to have a maid. Yes, someone whom you are when you're short of help to offer you the sort of help you never get from a spouse. Fluttering up the stairway, shuttering up the window, fluttering up the bedroom, fluttering up the master, fluttering all around the house. Everybody out there.
Looking pet, you've got that too. <laughs> you know, uh, mine never forgets. Yeah, but mine has a lot more to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that one? <laughs> hey, what ma what made you get an elephant for a pet? Well, there's no dogs allowed in my building. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. Where'd you get him? Well, he used to work at a circus. Mm -hmm. He and <laughs> he and five other elephants used to drive around in a Volkswagen. Oh, how'd you fit the six elephants in a Volkswagen? Three in the front, three in the back. Three the back. <laughs> well, I must say your pet looks very playful. Oh, she sure is. We have this great game, her and me. We have a huge ball of string. Boy, is it ever fun. <laughs> you mean you play with a ball of string? No, we tie up my wife with it. <laughs> well, I gotta be going. I, I'll see you. Let's move out. Come on, Rover. <laughs> Thank heaven for little girls for little girls Heaven for little girls, they grow up in the most delightful way. Those little eyes, so helpless and appealing, someday will flash and send you. Crashing through the ceiling Thank heaven For little girls Thank heaven for them all No matter where No matter who Without them Yes, without them, what would little boys? Without them, what would little boys do? I know what you'll do, Pavlin. You're gonna grow up and break a lot of hearts.
to capture you. <laughs> Just look at those balls. <laughs> the texture is unbearable. Mr. Martin, what you need is something in the woods. Now you're talking. <laughs> Personally, I recommend rosewood. What? Rosewood. Well, if rosewood, I would... <laughs> In place of this couch, I see a bed. The bed was invented in Egypt, you know. I wonder they had so many mummies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fascinating <laughs> that the first bed was carved completely out of wood. I bet that wasn't easy. <laughs> the hardest part was carving all those feathers for the mattress. <laughs> That awful bookcase has to go. You need an occasional piece here. I'll buy that. <laughs> now over in that corner, we need the we need the classical touch. Perhaps something old and Greek. How about a picture of uh, Aristotle on <laughs> I said old, not prehistoric. Oh. <laughs> what I had in mind was a Grecian urn. What's a Grecian urn? Whatever she can get. Ah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Ah! You know, it's a pleasure to see you, and I want to tell you, you know... You look uh, younger every time you come around here. I, no, I ain't reading no cards now. This is the truth. <laughs> Thank That's you the truth. very much, Dean. So, right. you, you're only as young, I always say, as you think you are. I am 16. Going on 17. One for the little girl 
Off and puts them on my forehead. We've had, uh, you know, incidentally, we've had over 375,000 entries in my mystery voice contest, and nobody, and I mean, nobody has recognized my mystery voice yet. So listen close, because here it is again. This is the last time. Uh, this, this is the mystery voice. Listen. Ever since that night We've been together Lord of my sight In the forever It turned out so right For strangers in the night He says, dooby doo I'm gonna die dooby dooby doo Scotty, Wadi, Dooby Doo. How can anybody end the song with Dooby Dooby? Now, come on, out there in television land. Somebody must know who that cat is. <laughs> so you just send in your entry tonight. It's, it's easy to enter. You just tear off the top of your piano and send it in. <laughs> send it in together with a recent photograph of. Yourself with Fidel Castro. <laughs> and you just listen to these prizes. Second prize winner will receive... <laughs> a 
<laughs> I'd like to give them that band. The second they will receive a 30-minute parking place absolutely free in front of the supermarket of your choice. <laughs> and now here's the grand prize. <laughs> You will be flown to Hollywood. Even if you're here, you'll be flown to Hollywood. <laughs> you'll be flown to Hollywood for a two-week all-expense paid trip where you'll have a personally conducted tour of the air conditioning system in the former home of Sal Mineo. That's what's going to be the first prize. So everybody, I mean everybody, do be do a do everybody and a my mystery voice contest because, guys, somebody should know him. <laughs> Thank you. 